Hi, my name is Valerie Ruby Santos and welcome to UTEP Arts Alive. I personally am part of the UTEP Department of Theater and Dance and I'm a student here, hopefully graduating this December. Um, I'm going to be reading a section of the book Into the Beautiful North by Luis Alberto Urrea, which is, um, we did the play for uh, all throughout October, so it'll be streaming on our department page. Nayeli pulled her father's postcard from her sock and studied it. A cornfield with an impossibly blue sky, an American sky. She had seen it over and over again in the movie. Only American skies, apparently, were so stunningly blue. She turned the card over. It said, a typical corn crop in Kankakee, Illinois. She more or less understood the message. Una cosecha típica, she told herself. Don Pepe had written, everything passes. She rose slowly and drifted out the door. Yolo and La Vampira were waiting outside. ¿Qué te pasa? La Vampi asked. Yolo said, are you all right, chica? Nayeli waved them off. Hey, said Yolo, we're talking to you. Nayeli gestured for them to follow her and walk to the town square. She absentmindedly swept off a bench and sat down. Her homegirl sat on either side of her. She held up a finger for quiet while she thought some more. She finally said, the Magnificent Seven. They stared at her. So, said Yolo. Boring, said Vampi. The Seven, Nayeli repeated. What about them, Yolo said. We have to go get them, Nayeli said. We have to go to Los Unites and get the Seven. ¿Qué? Vampi cried. ¿Es Steve McQueen? No, Mensa, Yolo snapped. He's dead. We have to stop the bandits before they come and destroy the village, don't you see? They're coming. So, said Vampi. Who is going to fight them? Nayeli asked. Yolo dug her toe into the ground. Cops, she said. What cops? Nayeli asked. Yolo shrugged one shoulder. I guess your dad would have. They sat there. We go, Nayeli said. We find the seven men who want to come home, but they have to be what? Soldiers? Yolo suggested. Right. We interview men. Only cops or soldiers can come. Vampi held up a finger. Perdón, she said. Where are we going again? Los Unites, Yolo said. What? Are you kidding? We're not kidding, Nayeli said. Oh, great. There goes my week, Vampi complained. We have a mission, Nayeli said. We're only going there to bring men back home. Vampi said, maybe you can find your father? Nayeli looked at her. She sat back down. What about my father? Yolo demanded. Vampi replied, he's not a cop. They sat there stunned by the enormity of Nayeli's plan. We will only be there for as long as it takes to get the men to come, she continued. The Americanos will be happy we're there, even if we're caught. You're crazy, Yolo said. Dances, Nayeli whispered. Boyfriends, husbands, babies, police, law and order, no bandidos. They sat there for 10 minutes looking at the ground. Pin tenders too, Yolo offered, because you know, I'm tired of working at the bowling alley. Maybe, you know, we could get one gay boy, Nayeli said, for poor Tacho. Yolo nodded wisely. Tacho needs love too. We should take Tacho with us, Vampi cried. They turned to her with a bit of awe. It was the first really good idea La Vampi ever had. The girlfriends had all seen Los Hermanos Blues at the Pedro Infante a few months earlier. We're on a mission from God, Nayeli intoned. La Vampi turned to her and said, I'm going. Nayeli cried, we can repopulate our town. We can save Mexico. It begins with us. It's the new revolution. She stood up. Isn't it time we got our men back in our own country? She was slipping into Aunt Irma campaign mode. She sat back down. Oh my God, said Yolo. I can't believe I'm agreeing to this. They slapped hands. To the north, Nayeli said. Al norte, they replied. We have to tell the old woman, Nayeli said. La osa, cried Yolo. Are you crazy? She'll never allow us to do it. I think she will. No, she won't. She'll bite our heads off. 
No, Nayeli said. She stood up and brushed herself off. I think she'll give us her blessing. She started to walk away, but stopped and turned back. We're going, she said, to bring home the magnificent seven. Thank you. Hello there, my name is Chris J. Marer. I'm the scene designer as well as projectionist for Into the Beautiful North. Well, before COVID happened, originally for my design process and ideas I had was to have these flats get flown in and out to distinguish different scenes that are happening within the play. And there'd be projections of um, like wherever they're located at, there'd be something projected on there to show where they're located at. You know, there'd be like sets on wheels so they can go in and out, like click paste. Um, and then of course COVID happened, which yes, sucks because you know, we couldn't really do it in person. But the good thing I found out of it was to me, the script read more like a film, either movie, TV show, just because the scenes were pretty quick and fast paced. So I took, you know, the negative of COVID and made something a positive out with the script. And I felt like, okay, this would actually go do pretty well going online. You know, since to me, I, when I read the script, it felt more like a movie. So then um, it pretty much was a collaboration thing because we weren't quite sure yet, like, what does that mean? What do you mean? How are we going to go online? And, you know, we had production meetings and it was pretty cool. I had some sketches um, and a lot of the script got cut down so that uh, so some of like my original sketches I had for my ideas of designing the show online, uh, you know, changes up a bit. Hello, my name is Mariana Baidon. I am the costume designer for Into the Beautiful North. And today we're gonna take you through how the design process went and how we got what we got. So come along. When we started to think about Into the Beautiful North in terms of costumes, one of the most important things for me was to get the tone of the piece right. If you've seen it already, you'll realize that it's a very intricate piece in the sense that it has a very specific tone because it's using all of these elements from westerns and it can go in a very different directions really fast without proper understanding. So that was the main thing, incorporating these elements of westerns into the design and transmitting them to the audience. But if you look at your movie releases, you'll realize that there aren't a lot of westerns there anymore. How do we transmit the feeling of a western to an audience that may not be as familiar with what that feeling is? And so looking back, thinking about the movies that we watch today, the media that we consume, I came to the conclusion that our modern westerns are superhero movies. And I wanted to incorporate that and such elements to our design to get that feeling of a western and I looked towards Mexican superheroes, radio shows like Caliman, developments in modern design that incorporate these new types of media and the collectibles, the stamps, uh, you look at like Panini album stamps or trading cards, um, figurines, all those sorts of things. And those became the building blocks for what the design would ultimately turn out to be. Hey guys, my name is Victor Maldonado and I am the lighting designer for Into the Beautiful North. And today I'm going to be taking uh, you through my process. So as you can see the red arrows pointing at the shadows, um, these were some of the first struggles um, I encountered with doing um, zoom theater so you can see that they have the shadows under their necks and they have um, what we decided to call raccoon eyes where they have shadows around their eyes um, so that was one problem that we had to figure out how to fix it was also my first time lighting a green screen 
Um, I didn't know too much about these things, so I had to do quite a bit of research. So to get the job done, I looked into three things. I looked into how a green screen works and how to light it, what equipment I need to light the actors and the green screen, and what else I could bring to the table. Um, on the image to the left, you can kind of see that they're the Avengers and they're on treadmills running on the green screen. And I thought that was pretty cool. So it was important for me to try to think outside the box on what exactly I could bring to the table. All right, hello everyone. This is Ian Gilliam and I am the sound designer for Into the Beautiful North. And I wanna to talk to you a little bit about my design, both the, the design that uh, would have been had we put this on stage, but also talk a little bit of how I took stuff from that design and brought it in for turning it into this Zoom play that we put together. Interestingly enough, there was a lot of things about Zoom that kept a need for a lot of the aspects of my design. So, hope you guys enjoy Into the Beautiful North. <laughs>